I want to talk a little bit about Maryland's offense, what they do well on offense, how I see Ohio State's defense kind of fitting into that, and how they may game plan and personnel Maryland's offense, because it's a hard one to face. So as I watch Maryland's film, I come away thinking as a coach that they do a lot formationally. So they'll get an empty, they'll get in bunch empty, they'll motion guys around, they'll get in 11 personnel where it looks like um, they've got a two tight end look, although it's just a it's just a receiver that's closer to the box and a condensed set. They give you a lot of different pre snap pictures, and that's pretty hard to defend as a defensive coordinator because you have to account for gaps, you have to account for the guys in the secondary. So Maryland does a good job of giving you all these different looks that you have to prepare for. Secondly, I think they do a really good job of finding weaknesses in your defense or finding the weakness in your defense. So if that's the wheel linebacker or that's your safety. They do an unbelievable job of isolating that defender and putting them in some tough spots. So you'll see Maryland um, on film run a ton of RPOs. They do a really good job of making their weakness or the weakness defender ma make a decision. Um, they put a lot on that person's plate. So when we're looking at this clip here, and I'll let it run through, okay, Maryland is in 11 personnel. Okay, so they're on a two-by-two two look with an attached tight end, and then they have a condensed Z here. So you have, to, you have to account for the Y and the receiver there as an extra gap almost. Okay, what Maryland did to, this is Charlotte, is they isolated the Will linebacker quite a bit and their defensive end. So when you watch the film, it's as if they did not think well of these two defenders. So if we're thinking about this coming Saturday and who that person may be, of who they're isolating, and they have a similar game plan, that's going to be Steel Chambers. So this first clip is, is outside zone. So when Maryland runs outside zone, they go Covered and uncovered rules. So you'll see up front here with my cursor, okay, if you're uncovered as an offensive lineman in the outside zone, you're going to pull. Okay, if you're covered, obviously you're going to latch and you're going to reach, trying to get to the outside shoulder. And that's how they run their outside zone. And I think when you watch the Charlotte film, at least, that's their most successful run. Um, they do a really good job moving horizontally and moving run fits horizontally. Okay, Maryland's not great at running gap scheme or trying to run the ball at you. I, ju I just don't think they're good enough up front to be able to do that to anybody on a given week. So you'll see here they pair a stick RPO with outside zone. So they're putting uh, the five technique in conflict and the will linebacker. So you have a stick with an out route. Okay, they don't get to the – the will doesn't get to the flat because it looks actually they, they're in a type of pressure where they're in a creeper pressure where they're dropping in. So the end doesn't get, that, get out there in time. But they're trying to put the will in conflict. They're also putting the D in conflict by not blocking as well. So you got a two for one there. So that's something you're going to see on Saturday um, versus Ohio State. This is one of their main run core concepts, and they do a really good job of pairing it with RPOs. So you'll, get, you'll see again here from the back view, and I think 74. I think their uh, left tackle is pretty tough. I think their worst offensive lineman is 75. Doesn't move great, not real physical. Um, so if Ohio State wants to game plan this week to attack a weakness in their offensive line, I think it's 75. I think you put JT on – on 75, or you just throw some safe creeper pressures at him for a two-for-one. Because I don't have the clips, but there's clips where uh, he has a hard time digesting who he should pick up when you have pressures coming his way. So that's the first clip. That's what you're going to see a lot in the run game. You're going to see a lot of outside zone. You're going to see some counter as well. And they're going to do a good job of pairing it with RPOs. So they're going to put a lot of conflict on your defense. Quarterback's pretty tough as well. So second here. Okay, so this is the counter. So again, another RPO that they're going to attach. So they've got a slant and flat or a uh, bubble route there or dragon concept, whatever you want to call it, and they've got counter up front. So I've showed you outside zone. I've showed you counter. Those are their two main run concepts. And they do an okay job of running counter. Um, the ball gets spilled quite a bit, so that means the ball gets to the outside. And, I, and honestly, Ohio State has struggled when the ball gets bounced. We've had a hard time really feeling that. So you'll see here they're putting the walk down safety in conflict because you'll see that uh, Sam is attached to the box, so they're going to walk down. And the key read on this RPO is going to be your walk down. I don't know what you call it, field safety, whatever you want to call it, trunk safety. But they're putting in conflict. So you'll see that he widens with, with the motion and the bubble there, and then we're just throwing it right in behind there. So, again, you're putting a lot of guys in conflict. You're, you're reading, I don't know, D-gap if you want to say that. So we've got counter G T. I'm sorry, we have counter G H up in the box. Okay, we're reading the flat defender again, putting guys in conflict. So when you think about that, Sam linebacker could be Styles, um, whoever they have there. They rotate a lot of guys. They have a couple of different personnel sets. So that could be Styles. It could be, I mean, really Proctor if he walks down. Um, whoever they see fit is who they want to game plan against. 
In my, in my head, I think that's going to be steel, but we'll see. Here's the back end view. So again, we're just throwing that RPO. Um, empty, they do a really good job of empty. They show a couple of different looks out of empty. That's what, that's what they really want to get to. In the passing game, okay, they do quite a bit in the passing game. Um, they like to get an empty because they like to isolate this backside will defender. Um, a lot of times they're going to run a drive concept back here. So this, this is going to be, I don't know, 10 to 12 yard dig, and they're going to isolate this will linebacker. So he's going to read space. If he's got inside leverage, he's coming out. Okay, if this guy has outside leverage, then he's going in. They really wanted to isolate this will, and they thought they had, um, they thought they had the personnel to do it. I think they did do a really good job. Although he's just in a zone, he's just in a zone turn here. The ball gets the ball gets thrown to him. But they're isolating a will linebacker in front side. You've got the new age stick concept, wide stick. So you've got him running a. Uh, a stick concept out wide. You've got the slot fade, and you've got a stick right here as well. Because normally in stick, okay, you're running a fade here. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna be the uh, the go route. Okay, you're gonna be a, a quick out, and then you'll have a stick here, and you're reading your same linebacker. But the new age stick is running the slot fade, and pretty much having two um, stop routes. So you have a control route out wide here, and then you have the stick. But again, they're just trying to isolate defenders when they're going empty. And I think Maryland does a good job of running empty. So again, that's gonna be steel chambers there if that's how they're going to align. So Ohio State's got to figure out what personnel groupings they want to use and how they're going to align to the Y. And they're going to put the SAM here, and then you're going to have steel backside. Um, it's all how they game plan it, but this is just an idea to give you of what you're going to see Saturday and some of the mismatches or some of the um, concepts they're going to try and run at you. So, again, same thing here. So I, I did want to talk about how, like, this is a three-by-one set here. But Maryland loves to have five guys in the route. So they're always sending their back out in the route. Um, and that's what I wanted to highlight here. Um, so you'll see he comes out and runs a flat concept. So we've got a slant or snag, whatever you want to call that, that's a sit there. So we have snag concept to the boundary and then to the field again. We have almost we have uh, two controls here. So we have, a, we have two hitches with a dig right in behind it. I think you're trying to isolate uh, your Sam linebacker there. So again... That's just Maryland, again, running, getting five guys out in the route, trying to um, isolate a defender, and the ball gets thrown. And then lastly, I want to go over, Maryland does a really good job of running screen game off their play action. Uh, I think there's a, they're a really good screen team as well. So, like, if they're running a three-by-one, they'll attach it to their run game if they have the numbers. Okay, they're going to attack you in all areas of the field, and they do it well formationally. But here it's off a boot concept. So you're throwing a backside. So if backside defenders are really chasing the cue. Okay, you got the numbers backside, and you guys get, and you have guys out um, for the sidewalk. So you're kicking. So you're kicking here with your left tackle, and then your looks like your right guard is setting the inside.